While Joe Gibbs is known as the NFL head coach who became an owner, Jerry Glanville is the NFL head coach who became a driver. In his early 50s, while still coaching the Atlanta Falcons, Jerry Glanville began his NASCAR career. Before we go over that, let's briefly go over his time in the NFL and what made him one of the most memorable coaches in football history. Jerry Glanville's journey in the NFL began as a special teams and defensive assistant for the Lions in 1974. Fast forward to 1984, he became the defensive coordinator of the Oilers, and just two years later, he was named the team's head coach. Under his leadership, the Astros Dome, where the Oilers played, became known as the House of Pain due to the team's hard-hitting style. But it wasn't just the team's tough play that grabbed headlines. Glanville's flamboyant personality was just as memorable. He would show up to games in all black and leave tickets for Elvis Presley at Will Call, who had been dead for over 10 years at the time. However, Glanville's fiery personality could sometimes lead to trouble. He infamously attempted to punch a referee after a missed call during a game. Despite leading the Oilers to multiple playoff appearances, Glanville's tenure as head coach came to an end in 1990, when it was mutually decided that he would not return to the team. However, he was quickly hired by the Falcons a week later. The following year, Glanville was openly against the Falcons drafting Brett Favre, famously saying it would take a plane crash for him to put Favre in a game. Even after coaching Atlanta to their first playoff win in over a decade, he was fired after back-to-back -back losing seasons in 1993. Although he made some questionable decisions like his stance on Brett Favre, he also had some positive ones. For instance, he gave Nick Saban his first NFL coaching job. Most recently in 2022, Glanville coached the Alabama Airborne in the major football league. Huge shout out to Lauren from She Got Sports. The link to her channel is down in the description below. Jerry Glanville's family was actually involved in drag racing when he was growing up. He caught the racing bug at an early age, but when he was the head coach of the Falcons, he decided to visit his buddy Bill Elliott one day. One thing led to another, and the NFL head coach was persuaded into trying his hand in stock car racing. Only, this wasn't in ARCA or the local ranks. Nah, nah, nah. This was in the freaking NASCAR car bush series with sponsorship help from the atlanta falcons he was able to make this dream a reality so i i go up there and uh, talk and, and then he asked me to go with ernie and ernie says you know you ought to drive a bush car i goes really he goes you'd love it and you'd be good at it and, and it was kind of funny uh the, the nascar guy looked at me and says they have sent you to hell glanville got clipped he, mike he porter it looked got spun a little bit and jason keller caught him and then here's Jerry Glanville oh looking for an goodness. escape route. Uh-oh, look where he... Ouch. <laughs> wrong, wrong route. Flat, flat tracks, you don't go to the top side. Coach Jerry Glanville and his crew last night went to Dick's Last Resort Restaurant. They had this big poster up on the wall, this top 10 list that they gave to Jerry. And with apologies to David Letterman, it's hanging on Glanville's truck here for everybody to see. Top 10 reasons from the home office why Jerry Glanville will hit the wall. Number 10, there's no place in the car for Elvis to sit. Number nine, because Deion Sanders isn't driving. Number eight, it's becoming habit. Number seven, this race isn't in the Georgia Dome. Number six, too many hammer moves while driving. Number five, Falcons can't win on the road. <laughs> Number four, Bum Phillips is on his pit crew. Number three, impossible to race with a case of Milwaukee's best in the front seat. Number two, can't fit the cowboy hat and belt buckle on his driver's suit. And the number one answer, because David Letterman is moving to CBS. Glanville made six Bush Series starts from 92 to 93 for both Lewis Cooper and himself. His best career finish would end up being 20th and DNF'd in half of those races. In 1994, he would make 10 starts in ARCA where he should have belonged to begin with, but in 1995, he decided to move up to the brand new NASCAR Super Truck Series. By this point, he was a couple of years out of professional football and wanted to make a go of it in racing all on his own. Well, you see, uh, that's when they getting into the wall. Looks like that, that when he tried to squeeze by him, it just jammed things up behind him. The black and white truck is Steve Portengay. No, that's Jerry Glanville. Excuse me, 81. He's hooked up with Roland Veronica. They're doing great things. Look down, around goes Legacy and smacks the wall while everybody else missing. 81 also involved Jerry Glanville. Now some contact between the 81 and Rutman goes by, and we see the right rear make some contact with the P.J. Jones in that Sears diehard truck. Here's another angle. Looks like Glanville came from shooting up to that car. Uh, Bob, Bob Keselowski, I believe, hit. I know he's the one that hit the 21 truck. And Glanville had no place to go. He got caught up. That was not his fault. Some contact between 
Mike Bliss and Jerry Glanville, and Glanville spins right in front of Rick McRae, I believe. Yeah. Oh, and I thought Glanville was going to back in front of the leader. He is. He's backing up right in front of this entire race traffic line that's coming at him. He's not going to make a lot of popular friends. Finally, Tammy Joe loses control and spins. And so Glanville went, oh, he oh. got by fellows, and boy, did he hit her hard. He made a total of 27 starts in the NASCAR Truck Series from 1995 to 1999. Even though he failed to score a single top 10, that didn't stop him from attempting to qualify for a NASCAR Cup Series race. After DNQing for the Cup race at Richmond in 98 and making four starts in the Truck Series in 99, he would never race in NASCAR's Top 3 Series again. However, he was a part of CBS's coverage of all three series during parts of the 2000 season. Could be the winners when this day is over. That's what makes this series so exciting. What also makes this series exciting is the gentleman who's joining me from coast to coast and around the world. He knows every inch of many an American racetrack. He is the coach. Jerry Glanville. Great to have you with us today, Jerry. By the early 2000s, he was racing sporadically in ARCA, where he would find the most success in his racing career. 2000 and 2001 were his best years, where in a combined 12 starts, he scored two top fives and six top tens. Even going on to lead the first laps of his career in the fall Kentucky race in 2001. But just like for most of this video, Glanville had his other moments. So a tough break for both those pilots. You have to especially feel bad, not only for Green, who had so much at stake tonight, but for Jerry Glanville, who's done this for a long time. He's run Bush Series races, ARCA events, the trucks for a long time, and was on his way perhaps to his best career finish tonight. I saw Kerry spin. Kerry spin went up. I saw him hit the wall. I tried to get down underneath him, slid right down in front of me. He couldn't hold it once he got up there, and uh, unfortunately, it just, you know, you don't come here and spend a week to run a lap. Jerry Glanville spins, hits the wall. Now, watch what happens. Right here, you can see the fuel ignites and the car is ablaze. He would never race again after making one start in 2004 at the age of 62. Ever since his last ARCA start, he has been in and out of coaching. Jerry Glanville's career in NASCAR will forever be looked at as a meme, but in a good way. He seemed like someone who was just happy to be there, and hopefully sometime down the road, we'll see him at a NASCAR race again. While Joe Gibbs is one of the best owners, he's certainly no driver like Jerry Glanville. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Also a quick reminder, huge shout out to The Daily Downforce as well as Team Live Fast for having me and my best friends on a Cup Series car. Catch the 78 Daily Downforce Chevy racing around Darlington Raceway on May 14th. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.